BBC News with Sue Montgomery. The UN's World Food Programme has described the Russian blockade of Ukraine's ports as a declaration of war on global food security. Issuing the warning at the World Economic Forum in Davos, the executive director of the WFP, David Beasley, said it could push millions of people worldwide into famine. If we don't open those ports, you're talking about a declaration of war on global food security. It will have extraordinary consequences. We are already facing the worst worst food crisis since World War II. And when you take 400 million people that are fed by the food that comes out of Ukraine and you shut that off, and then you add on top of that fertilizer problems, droughts, food costs, fuel costs, we're looking at a hailstorm on Earth. The African Development Bank has approved a $1.5 billion fund to support food production across the continent. The United States Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin has said 20 countries have stepped forward to supply additional military support to Ukraine. Mr Austin spoke after hosting a virtual meeting of the Ukraine Defence Contact Group. He said he was particularly grateful to Denmark for promising to send Harpoon anti-ship missiles to Ukraine. Analysts say these weapons made by Boeing will greatly extend the striking range of Ukrainian forces. A Russian diplomat has quit over his country's invasion of Ukraine, calling it bloody, witless and absolutely needless. Boris Bondarev, a counsellor at Russia's mission to the UN in Geneva, said he'd never been more ashamed of Russia as when it sent its troops across the border. From Moscow, Steve Rosenberg. Mr Bondarev described Russia's military offensive as not only a crime against the Ukrainian people, but also the people of Russia. Since President Putin launched in February what he calls his special military operation in Ukraine, there have been few public resignations from Russian state institutions. But Mr Bondarev explained that after 20 years of being a diplomat, he could no longer share in what he called this bloody, witless and absolutely needless ignominy. Russian media are reporting that the Ukrainian soldiers who surrendered at the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol will face a trial in the same city. Denis Pushilin, the leader of the self-declared Donetsk People's Republic in southeastern Ukraine, said everyone who left the plant last week was being held in his territory. It's not clear how many Ukrainian soldiers would face a tribunal. Rescue workers in Iran say dozens of people are still trapped in the rubble of a 10-storey building that collapsed in the city of Abadan. At least six people were killed, with more than 25 people injured. World News from the BBC. More than 30 people are reported to be missing in the northeastern Nigerian state of Borno after being attacked by suspected militants at the weekend. Witnesses said the victims from the town of Ran were fired on by gunmen and motorbikes when they went into the bush to fetch firewood. Several escaped with gunshot wounds. It's feared that dozens of others have been abducted or killed. It's not clear who carried out the attack, but both Boko Haram and another militant group linked to Islamic State have been waging an insurgency in the region. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is under pressure from some MPs to explain photographs that show him drinking at a gathering in Downing Street at a time when parties were not allowed because of the Covid pandemic. The opposition Labour Party said the images showed the Prime Minister lied to Parliament when he repeatedly insisted all Covid rules had been followed. Helen Catt reports. The photos are reportedly from a leaving party for a senior Downing Street aide on the 13th of November 2020. In them, the Prime Minister can be seen with several others holding a drink behind a table with opened bottles of wine and food. The BBC understands that at least one of the people at this party was fined by the Metropolitan Police. The Prime Minister was not. Number 10 said the police had had access to all relevant information, including photographs, as had the senior civil servant Sue Gray, and that the Prime Minister would address Parliament in full once her report was published in the coming days. The President of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, has described the killing of a prominent women's rights activist and lawyer as an execution and said federal officers were involved in solving the case. Cecilia Monthon was shot dead by two gunmen on a motorcycle while driving her car in the state of Puebla on Saturday. BBC News.